What it do? Blob time crew. Hey man, listen today. I'm here to talk about the tier list that everybody's been waiting for. The blob tier list, the obesity tier list, the BMI tier list, whatever you want to call it. We are here with it today. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. There's been a lot of discussion about Shamil Gaziev, you know, being the king of the blobs. I'm here to decide once and for all who is the ultimate blob, who's the most obese heavyweight in the current UFC roster. Let's get into it with a very strong candidate for the biggest blob in the UFC, my boy Tai Tuivasa. Now, guys, this is not me, by the way. Um, uh, no, people message me. Sorry about your loss to Taibora. I'm not Tai Tuivasa, okay? I am fighting Pantoja for the belt. Um, but yeah, Tai Tuivasa, I mean, he's coming in hot like a fucking roast chicken for dinner, bro. This guy had Taco Bell in his locker room. Imagine being Tai Tuivasa's coach, bro. And you hear a knock on the door, just fucking... And you pull up to the door and it's just, uh, three DoorDash uh, deliveries, uh, three Crunchwrap Supremes for Tai Tuivasa. And you're just like, ah, fuck. You just know he's cooked, bro. You know, you know he's like fucking chowing down, dude. Um, Tai Tuivasa, a big, big heavyweight, lot of jiggle physics. That's going to add into the obesity factor. Definitely up there in the BMI. So Tai Tuivasa, strong A tier. Let's move on to, I think, a guy that gets too much blob kind of allegations. And I'm here to dispel those, okay? I don't think Rosenstrike's a fucking blob, dude. I uh, Maybe controversial take here, guys. I don't think Rosenstrike is actually obese. I think if you look at his physique, um, which I have looked at for countless hours just to research the fights, of course, he ain't even fat, bro. He's got a little bit of jiggle. He's got a little bit of, you know, extra on him, you know? But uh, he's got a bigger chest than a stomach. And for me, you can't be a blob if your chest is bigger than your stomach. He is actually a bit muscular. And he's just a big dude. He's just the biggie boy. So I'm going to say Rosenstrike gets a little bit too much hate in the blob category. And I'm going to put him in the C tier. He's not actually a bit of a blob. And I think I've got another guy here that's also getting too many blob of the year uh, votes. Derek Lewis, not a blob, was a blob for a very long time, <laughs> was a very big motherfucker, still is ginormous, okay, but he has a, he has a six pack, uh, you, you're completely ruled out of candidacy in my opinion, um, to be the most fat, obese UFC heavyweight if you have a six pack, because that's better than 90% of the roster, dude, that's better than 90% of the top 15, dude, so, Derek Lewis might be the most aesthetic guy at fucking heavyweight, aside from Jelton Almeida, so, I just can't put him any higher. I'm going to give him some respect for his physique. I'm going to put him in the C tier. He's not really that much of a blob. Now, he does have the bald head. He does have the round physique. So I do understand that. I have to put him on the list, but he ain't going much higher. Let's move on to one of my prime examples of a guy that he's got a bit of, he's got a little bit of jelly on his, you know, physique. He's got a little bit of jiggle, but he's got mainly muscle. He is just 260 pounds of racism and white power. I'm putting Sergei Pavlovich in the D tier. This man is Russian as fuck, ra racist as fuck, of course. Um, I, know, I, I saw what you did to Curtis Blades. I don't forgive you. Um, all jokes aside, this guy is a bit of a chad. Sergei Pavlovich, Sergei Volkov, what a chad this guy is. Frankly, if I was ever gonna, if I was ever gonna congratulate Russia on anything, it'd be on Pavlovich. He's a, he's, a, he's a great chad. He lives the American lifestyle. He likes to gamble. He likes to beat people up. What a chad. Sergey Pavlovich D tier. He is not a blob. He beats up blobs, but you know he does have a bit of obesity on him. He's he's probably up in the you know slightly overweight category of BMI. If you know, you know. So Sergey Pavlovich, I'll put him on the D tier just to just to show everyone else what the gold standard of not being a blob is at heavyweight. Jelton Almeida is another great example. Let's move on though to perhaps my first kind of controversial entry. Maybe people are mad about the Lewis entry, but this one's going to be controversial. I think Jones is getting pretty bul blobulous, bro. I think he's getting a bit bulbous, dude. You know, people are like, oh, Jones is bulking up the heavyweight. He's fucking bulging, dude. His stomach is fucking sticking out of his shirt now, dude. He's getting old. So I'm going to put Jones in the B tier. Please don't kill me when you see me. Um, he's always in Australia for some fucking reason. I thought I heard like a car chase outside. That was probably him. So Jones, please don't hurt me. But he is getting a bit chunky, dude. He's starting to look a little bit like DC, bro. <laughs> he's starting to get old, boy. So... I'm going to say John Jones is in the B tier. He didn't really look peak physique against uh, Cyril Gunn, especially compared to Gunn, who's a bit of a chad uh, in terms of his genetics, not his fighting style, of course. But yeah, I'm going to put Jones in the B tier. Maybe a controversial entry here, but I just got to be real about it. And let's move on to 
uh, the man that apparently mobbed him. I don't know. I don't know about if I agree with that, but I think I belong in the D tier with Sergei Pavlovich. You know, he's a great fighter. I'd love to have the same physique as him. You know, I've got a bit of fat on me, but when I get in there on fight night, you know, I'm pretty, I'm quick as a cat. And I like to fight against uh, Blagoj Ivanov in my next fight if I can for the title. Tom Aspinall, he's going D tier again. He's a big boy, all right. He, he's he's not he's not clear of the the tier list, right? You know, my boy Shane Gillis over here ain't clear of the tier list, but he's not up there with Rosenstrike. He's not up there with with Jones and Tui Vasa. Nowhere close to that, to Tui Vasa. So Tom Aspinall, I would say D tier is a fair placement. He's got a bit of size on him that he uses, but again, a lot of it is muscle. He's a very quick guy. He doesn't have the blob attributes of being like ploddy plodster, you know. Um, that's what makes a real good blob is your fighting style. And speaking of a fighting style that is just so blobulous, Sergey Spivak. Sergey Spivak. He's a great fire. Um, I'm putting him in the B tier, dude, because this guy smells like onions. I know that's a fact. I can just tell. All right, you don't have to tell. Listen, someone in the in the comments probably trains with him. You don't have to tell me. I know. I can just look at this guy. I know. Um, <laughs> he's definitely got that fighting style where he just breathes heavily on you and he just sweats on you and you're like, oh, why does it feel like sticky when he's sweating on me? Oh, fuck. Like, why does this, what's that smell when he gets in the, in the octagon? <laughs> dude, Sergei Spivak is just such a funny motherfucker, dude. Uh, I'm going to put him in the B tier because he is a bit small for heavyweight. He's not a huge heavyweight like some of these other guys. Because when you see this A tier, you're going to go, holy fuck. It's like a Weight Watchers fucking meet up in here, dude. Um, but yeah, Sergei Spivak definitely got some blob fighting style characteristics. Got a bit of jiggle. Um, and I'm going to put him in the B tier. Let's move on to maybe the MVP of Supercuts in Poland, bro. Tybora got fucked up by his barber, dude. He had to take out that rage on Tui Vasa, and he had to take out the belly, dude. When they finish that fight, there's like a photo of them sitting against the cage. It's like two fucking seals just finished fighting, dude. And then just, he just pats to Ivas on the back, dude. Two fucking whales just went at it, bro. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to put uh, Tybura in the A tier. Uh, that haircut is not helping his case. He's just rotund. He's uh very like, you know, his belly was just moving like crazy when he was moving around. I was watching that fight just going, bro, he's just fat, dude. Um, but he's a big boy, so I can, I can kind of let it slide. I'm not going to put him S tier, but he's up there. He's definitely in the running for S tier and, uh, not a lot of running going on in the A tier, but they are in the running for S tier. Speaking of not running this man, Dilema, dude, the human egg, this guy's physique. There is not a single muscle on this man's fucking body, dude. He just looks smooth, bro. He literally looks like a fucking created character that you just hit X on enough times that you know, 2K is just like, whatever, dude. Just take a bald, you know, racially ambiguous man with no facial features. Like, just take whatever, dude. You, you clearly don't know what you want. Here, take this. That's what Delima looks like, dude. Bald head, no eyebrows, smooth fucking body, egg build all around. Built like a pear. Um, he's built like Grimace from fucking McDonald's, low-key, dude. So I'm gonna put, and he probably got excited hearing that comparison. So I'm going to put uh, Marcos Rogério de Lima in the A tier. Again, don't calf kick me. Please don't hurt me. And uh, it, it's nothing personal, but I just got to be real. And uh, this next one hurts, but I got to put my boy on the tier list. I'm going to put Curtis Blades in the C tier. Okay, I'm going to put Curtis Blades in the C tier. I think he himself would admit he's got a bit of... He's got a bit of... Uh, chunk on him you know he's got a bit of junk in the trunk you know he's got some love handles dude he uh laid his belly on almeida to pin him down and get the tko at ufc 299 i was so happy that he won but uh yeah he definitely utilizes it it's not a bad thing right you want to be big you want to be strong at at heavyweight you can't be like jelton almeida being 240 and refusing to fight at 205 i think curtis blades physicality actually won him that fight and won him like the volkov fight so I do think that there's nothing necessarily wrong with having fat on your body. Like, these are all good fighters. Um, but yeah, he's definitely got a bit of chunk on him. But he's not on the level of, like, Spivak and fucking Delima, dude, where he's just a, a circle getting in the octagon. And uh, speaking of circles, this guy literally is a fucking circle. Holy fuck, Romanov, bro. This guy is fucking insane to watch. This guy's build is great. This guy is maxed out on the sliders of weight and height. In the UFC. I think he's like 6'7", 340 pounds. I could be completely wrong, but he is a complete fucking blob. This guy is definitely up there considering like S tier. All right. 
A lot of people talking about the BMF title fights. We need to get a BMI title fight, bro. And I think Romanov could be in that division. He could be really up there in the rankings. So I think Romanov obviously belongs in the A tier. If you know what this guy looks like, you know I'm spitting. Let's move on to another underrated um, competitor in the race of obesity in the UFC, man. Mick Parkin, dude. I'm going to put this guy in B tier. He's bordering on A tier. He's fucking chunky, dude. He's getting a bit thick, boy. I'm going to put Mick Parkin in the B tier, bro. He's, he's, you know what I got to say about this guy? I can respect a man that's obese coming out of the UK because I know the food over there is trash, bro. The fact that this guy still went through with becoming like a heavyweight contender with a bit of jiggle on him, respect, bro, because you must have you must have built a lot of fortitude chowing down on fucking like stew for dinner every night. You know what I'm saying? I would I would become a blob too if I came home and it was just the crock pot every single night, bro. I feel like that's what it's like living in the UK, dude. You just come home, that crock pot is on every night, and you're like, oh, fuck's sake, what the fuck is this? So Mick Parkin. You're going in the B tier because it's pretty impressive to become a blob in the UK. I mean, I can understand the Americans becoming blobulous. I can understand the Brazilians kind of becoming blobs. But yeah, UK blob, very impressive. Let's move on. There is one man left before I talk about the S tier. This may be shocking because like I was talking about, if I was to do a BMI title fight, this guy would be in that fight. He is one of my, he was originally going to be S tier. The GOAT, Shamil Gaziev, bro. This fucking guy. It's just his, the way that he moves around that adds to his blobbiness as well. Like, he's just hobbling around. He's waddling around the cage. He's headbutting the cage. He's, like, heavy breathing out his mouth. His mouth guard's too small. He's doing this, like, little smile. Like, he just let out a fart, and he's, like, waiting for you to notice it. He's, like, grimacing at you. Bro, this guy's a fucking nightmare. Um, if I was a chicken wing, dude, I'd be terrified if I saw this fucking guy walking towards me, dude. If I was a, if I was a volleyball player, bro, if I saw this guy waddle out into the beach, I'd be like, bro, what the fuck? Aren't you supposed to be in the ocean, dude? But, uh, all jokes aside, Shamil Gaziev, hilarious fucking dude. Top two pound for pound in the blob conversation, but there is one man that mogs him. I completely forgot about him until I was doing my research for this video. The king of the blobs, Chris Barnett. This guy is the king blob. Shamil Gaziev, um, I was going to say Chris Barnett walked so Shamil Gaziev could run, but we know he doesn't run, so <laughs> Chris Barnett waddled so that Shamil Gaziev could hobble. Okay, dude, Chris Barnett is the OG obese fighter in the UFC. I'm pretty sure he missed weight at 265. I know Justin Taffa did as well, but I'm not putting him on the list because he lives in the same country as me, and I don't want to get chinned. So Chris Barnett, he's going to be my king of the blobs. This guy is ginormous. He is literally a walking fucking oval. Like, he has his own gravitational pull. And I think he would own that. I think he loves being a blob, and I gotta respect that. So, all these other guys are trying to lose weight. Chris Barnett's like, fuck it, I'm just gonna own being the obese guy. And for that reason, he is the king of the blobs. This is my obesity tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was worth the wait. Let Not that type of wait, alright? Let me know your thoughts on this video down below. Did your laptop collapse? through the floor as soon as you open the video let me know in the comments down below guys if you enjoyed it drop a like subscribe to the channel for more really uh informational really educational content go follow me on instagram at bedtime mma i will see you in the next video guys goodbye